Today's session, we are looking at the theory for APs, GPs. Um, in the context of, you have a chapter on APs, GPs, and binomials. So what we're going to do is we're going to split this into today and next week for APs and GPs, and then we're going to save binomials for later. Okay, there are much more similarities between APs and GPs um, than there are between the two of them and binomials. So it makes sense to have a natural split between the two. So just to get started with some of the, the basics of the terminology before we get into the ducts of APs and GPs, because I know that some of you haven't sent me the first few assignments yet, so I'm not sure of your familiarity with this topic. Please bear in mind, though, that this is an isolated topic, okay? It's one of those ones where you don't need to know what the, the gradient of a straight line is before you can do APs, GPs, and binomials. So if you are slightly behind, then it doesn't matter. We can still carry on. So, APs, GPs, binomials, we're talking here about sequences and series where we have numbers that are related. Now, um, I know that a lot of people often freak out just at the sight of this chapter because they remember IG sequences and series and the headaches that they caused. Let me reassure you right now that at AS, sequences and series are much nicer. They are far more logical, far more predictable, and therefore far more easy to deal with. So, the two big things that we need to, to figure out is the difference between a term and a sum. Now, it sounds like something that is, is relatively straightforward, but it's something that as you get into the questions, it's where people slip up. So let us look at a, a sequence, and we'll start with one that I'm sure that you are all familiar with. Okay, so we can see that we're going up in twos. So this is a term. Okay, this is a term. This here is the first term. Okay, if we then say 2 plus 4 plus 6 equals 12, this here is a sum, the sum of the first three terms. Now, we don't want such long phrases in what we're doing in math, so we need a shorthand way of indicating this. Okay, so what we're going to say is that u is a term, and capital S is a sum, okay, capital S. But then how do we say, okay, well, U is a term, how would we indicate the third term? How would we like refer to this six here? So this is our third term in our sequence, so it is U three. And make a note, this here, not in red, in pink, this here is a subscript. So, you're going to be doing this on lined paper. There's your lines. So you have to remember, and it is it's one of those simple but important things. U is a little letter, so it's half there, your standard handwriting size. The three is a subscript. It's the same like an exponent is lifted, a subscript is lowered, and it must be lowered. Because if you write U three, this is three times u, it's three u. It is not the third term. This is the third term. Okay, so subscripts are important. Right, what else do we want to put here? So u is a term. Um, u1 would be our first term. But that is, is a little bit clunky. because we're going to use that first term a lot, it's, it's very important. So we're not actually going to use U1, we're going to use A for that first term. So the second term, the third term, the fourth term, the fifth term, we can write U5 equals 10. Now fifth term equals 10. Okay, so we now have a way to, to shrink our English in order to get much shorter pieces of writing to represent the same thing. Okay, so 
obviously, if we can do it for terms, there must be some way of doing it for sums, and it's exactly the same. Instead of saying the sum of three terms, we would say capital S, three. A subscript. This is a sum of three terms. So, U3 is your third term. S3 is your sum of the first three terms. So, if we wanted to add all of this together, we would then have S1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So, S5 equals 18, 20, 30. Okay, so here we have some five terms. Okay, and then one other note which I actually should have started with. We're going to be covering roughly lessons 21 to 25. So if you're on lesson less than 21, don't freak out, this is still coming in detail. Okay. If you're past this, great revision. If you're on it, perfect timing. Okay, everybody happy so far? We're happy with the concept of a term and a sum. Right, so then let us talk about APs versus GPs. So, APs and GPs. AP stands for arithmetic progression, GP stands for geometric progression. APs are all about addition. So like we had in that previous um, example where we had two, four, six, eight, ten, we added two each time, that's an AP. GPs are all about multiplication. So here we would have 2, 4, 8, 16, 32. We would say times 2, times 2, times 2. And this is why I say that AS sequences are so much better than IG, because you're always working with an AP or a GP. So you always have that I add, I add, I add, or I times, I times, I times, always by the same number. Okay, so what happens if you're going minus 2, minus 2, minus 2? Well, that is simply addition of a negative number. What if you're doing divide by two, divide by two, divide by two? Well, that is simply multiplication by a fraction, times a half, times a half, times a half. Okay, so AP's addition, GP's multiplication. What do they have in common? Oh, I wanted just to erase a little bit of it. Obviously, it doesn't want to do that. So we're going to redraw this with a little bit of a gap because there are two things that APs and GPs have, which are identical, okay? That is A, which is your first term, and N, okay? So what is N? N can be your number of terms. It can also be your term identifier. So if we, example, had a sequence and we didn't know which term we wanted to look at, we could say UN. If we didn't know how many terms were in the sum, we could say SN. Okay, so it can be all of them or it can be some of them. Different to stats. Stats is always all of them. Okay, so where do we now start going different? We start going different when, remember how we said plus two and we said times two. So there's a difference. In an AP, you have a common difference, the same difference every time.
If it's plus two here and plus two there, it's plus two for every single one. It's a common difference. Okay? For a GP, it's going to be common again, but now it's R for a common ratio. We are always going to multiply by the same thing. Okay, right. What is wonderful about both of these is that they are predictable. And when something is predictable, then you can represent it by a formula. So in the lessons, there's a lot more detail about where these formulas come from and things like that. But the idea of this lesson is to give you an overview of the two. So how do we find, how do we calculate a single term for an AP? We can use the fact that UN, our unknown term, equals A plus N minus one times D. So if I told you to calculate the fifth term and I told you what the common ratio was, oh, I'm talking nonsense. Told you what the first term was and the common difference was, you're sorted. Okay, because you can plug in the numbers and you can calculate your fifth term or you can plug in and calculate your tenth term. Or I could tell you what the term value is and you could calculate A or N or D. Okay, so remember, every time you use a formula in one direction, you can use it in any other direction at all. This can be used to calculate a term value or the first term or the identifier or the common difference. If we can do it for an AP, we can do it for a GP. Okay, but we have to have a different formula because it's a different type of sequence. So UN equals AR to the N minus one. Okay, so our term equals our first term times our ratio to the power of N minus one. Right, if the terms are predictable, then the sums are also predictable. So for an AP, SN equals one half N, two A plus N minus one times D. For a GP, SN equals A, one minus R to the N over one minus R. Now, if you've done these lessons, you know that this is not the end of the story. We also have SN equals one half N A plus L, the, U, the last term. And we also have SN equals A R to the N minus one over R minus one. So, why are these ones grayed out? Because yes, they exist, but they're generally not very helpful. Okay, so this first purple one for our AP, this is going to work on all of them. The second one's only gonna work if you got the last term, which 99 times out of 100, you don't have that last term. Okay, so focus on the purple one. In terms of your GP, these are both the same, and it's about working with negatives or positives. Do you want to work with a, a, a if, if R to the N is gonna be big, you're gonna have one minus big gives you negative, one minus R gives you negative, so you're gonna be A times negative over negative gives you positive, okay? Or you could just work with positive. So, exactly the same personal preference, and the thing why I do that first one is in pink, is because GPs are so cool. GPs have something important that is different, okay? They have a sum to infinity. Whoopsie, not a sum of eight. A sum to infinity. And the sum to infinity is A over one minus R, okay? In this case, we have to have certain restrictions on R. Okay, we're gonna talk about that in a moment. But see the similarity between these two sum formulas. Okay, the, oh, they've got the one minus r in the same direction. So I find it much easier to remember this first one, and then I can handle the negatives. Okay, so, but again, if you like the gray one, go for it. But 
avoid this gray one for the AP. So there's a few things I want to point out here, okay? This is where people commonly lose marks. For an AP, it is here with this D and with this D, okay? So I am going to remind you that N minus one minus two is equal to N minus three. On the flip side of the coin, we don't have an equally violently colored pen, so we'll use the same color. If you have N minus one minus two in brackets, you get minus two N plus two. So there is your difference. And there is your reminder of why signs is the S word and brackets is the B word when it comes to swearing in maps. If you do not put that difference of minus two into brackets, then you do not get any marks for this because you've got this first situation where you've got N minus one, minus two, which is N minus three. You do not have a multiplication unless you have that multiplication indicated. Okay, so note to the wise, always substitute with brackets. Then you save yourself the headache. You don't have to remember to be special when you're doing an AP. Always substitute with brackets. Okay, so always substitute with brackets. The reason why this crosses the line is because there's another one of these in the GP of the camp. Okay, it's here. And then also by default, it's here. Because one over two squared equals one over two. If you have one over two squared, this equals one over four. Spot the difference. In this first option, the square is attached only to the one, laws of indices. In this second option, the square is attached to both the numerator and the denominator. The power of brackets and laws of indices. See how nicely they work together? And see how it is again, always substitute with brackets. So it doesn't matter if you write this first option and on the next line you write a quarter, that's not what your working said. According to your working, your quarter is a mistake because your working says one over two and you just squared the one. Okay, so it is really important that your working as you write it gets the answer that you write. So it's not just the case, another reminder, again, I reiterate, it is not just the case of getting the right answer at AS. It's a case of working systematically through all the steps in your working, having all of those steps communicated correctly and therefore getting to the correct answer. That's how you get your marks. You can't get final answer marks at AS unless you've got all your marks on the way. Okay, please, 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 always substitute with brackets. Make sure you do not neglect this. Okay, so um, we have covered sums, we've covered terms, we know we have a common difference for addition, we know we have a common ratio for multiplication. So this sum to infinity, what does all this governs mean on the right hand side? Let's get a different color. Not quite as violent, but different to what we've been working with. Okay, so what does it mean when we say all these funny lines around the R? Okay, so this is meaning modulus of R. Size of R is less than one. He expands to minus one is less than R, which is less than one. This is just a shorter way of doing it. Okay, but always with R doesn't equal zero. Okay, note that there are less than, not less than, equal to. Because if your ratio is one, then your sequence goes two, two, two. It's very boring. And if your ratio is zero, your sequence goes two. Then because when you multiply by your ratio, it all disappears. Okay, so two, zero, 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 zero is a very boring sequence. 
Okay, so when we have this situation, what is happening is that each term successive in a sequence is getting smaller and smaller and smaller. So when you sum and you add those teeny tiny 0.0, no, 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 forever one, when you add it on, is it really going to change your answer to three significant figures? It's not. It really isn't. Okay, and of course, as we go further and further towards infinity, that term is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller. So it's going to have even less impact, certainly to three significant figures, even to a million significant figures, it's not going to impact. So we effectively have the sum to infinity, which is a very nice thing to have um, in terms of being able to do funky things in maths. Okay, we can sum to infinity and beyond. Brilliant. Okay, so. Obviously, we can only do that with a GP because we can only do it when we're multiplying, when we're making that term smaller and smaller and smaller. APs don't have a sum to infinity. So, that is your basically summary of, of the lessons in that this is what we have for APs, this is what we have for GPs, and this is how they relate. Do we have any questions? Um, it's next piece is just to look a little bit about how we handle these questions. Any questions at this stage about the formulas you need to learn? They are in your formula sheet, but by the time you've done half a dozen questions, you should be remembering these. And in terms of knowing when to use them, it's much better if you've memorized them. Any burning questions? Okay, seems like we're all happy, so let us carry on. How do we tackle these questions? This is one of the sort of most crucial things. As you've seen um, in the, the formulas, there's, there's nothing actually all that complicated in terms of you can plug values into a formula. So the, the test then comes in how do you get from the question to the correct formulas? How do you get that information out of your question? And the key to that is that you summarize. Okay, and you're going to summarize all the way down. To A, N, and D or R, depending if you've got an AP or a GP. And this is what we're going to work through next week when we do past paper questions, is that you'll actually see this summarizing in action, because that's what's really important. So for an example, if I tell you that an AP um, fifth term is 25, your summary would be AP U5 equals 25 equals A plus 4D. Okay, so if I then told you the first term is 3, you can then go calculate D quite happily because you can see it straight away. Okay, so this here is from a question, Oop, not just that. The fact that it's an AP as well, it's from the question. This here is your broken down summary. If I told you that you've got a GP with a sum to infinity is 281, we would have GP S infinity equals 281 equals A over 1 minus R. And what's going to happen is that you're going to see this magic whereby equations are going to start popping out of your summary. Okay, and you don't even have to go hunting to figure out how you're going to calculate these. They're going to pop straight out. Okay, so 
Right, that's how we go to summarize. All the way down to A, N, D, or R. The other thing we are going to do, which is quite important, is we're going to align our summaries. If I tell you that the third term of an AP is equal to the tenth term of a GP, you're going to put the summaries of those on one line. So, half page, half your page, summaries across. Because then you're going to get, you've got your equal things on a line. Equal things, we can build equations. So, if I tell you fifth term, whoa, can't spell. Fifth term of AP is 10th term of GP. We would have an AP column, we would have a GP column. Okay, fifth term of an AP. So U5 equals A plus 4D. We don't have a value. Here, 10th term of a GP, U10 equals AR to the N minus one. So U10, so AR to the nine. So if I then told you that A is equal to three, you could put it in and you can start building equations. There's always going to be enough information in that question to build the equation. Okay, the best way to do this is to actually see it in action to do questions. Um, so that's why um, I'm hoping that you can most definitely make it for next week's lesson where you'll actually put this into practice and you can see the summaries in action and then how valuable they are for pulling out those equations for actually then solving the questions. Any burning questions now? Send them through. If you've got any topics that you want to do a live lesson on, then also send them through on the website chat um, so that I can put those into the calendar. Otherwise, um, we will do the past paper questions for this next week as the two lessons are a pair. After that, the calendar is open. Three, four suggestions.